Hey everyone, Chloe here and welcome back to my channel. And if you are new here, ladies and lurkers and ear hustlers, welcome. So I wanted to make a video to talk about what is often a very triggering and sometimes very wincing and can also be a very uncomfortable conversation for women to openly have. And that is on the topic of pretty privilege. But I will be sharing my mindset suggestions on how a woman can fix or make adjustments to her pedestal and her crown if she is considered a woman who does not have pretty privilege and women who are beautiful. Now we first started this wonderfully honest conversation over at Hypergamous Hive and shout out to the Hive regarding whether or not if pretty privilege is real. And let me know in the comment section below on whether or not you believe it's real and does having pretty privilege make hypergamy easier for beautiful women? But I wanted to use this video of course, for a deeper unpacking on what is considered attractive and to share my insights on not only pretty privilege, but also on the contextual differences that are often ignored, but also on the contextual differences between the words pretty and attractive and beautiful and desirable as beauty will always be in the eye of the beholder. So what is considered beautiful will vary from person to person. But the concept of beauty will often be used quite irresponsibly or in half-baked ways or oversimplified ways and has been historically used in a weaponized uh, narrative of shame to damage, to harm, to disempower, to humiliate, or to break down women. And of course, this damage has often been perpetuated by uh, feminine men and toxic men who seek to position themselves as an authority on worth based on their very skewed and their very narrow and shallow and uneducated mindsets. Now, I first wanted to start off by saying, and this will sound cliche, but it is true. But I wanted to first start off by saying that every woman will have something or several things about her that will make her attractive to the world and or to the opposite sex. And that every woman who is tuning in will have the ability to increase her desirability by educating herself on the soft feminine energy of the feminine arts, as there is a lot to unpack and a lot to unlearn, which is why you need to subscribe to this channel. But there are many qualities that will fall into the column of beauty and attractiveness that are often underestimated, like having a genuine heart or having compassion or having a fun loving personality or having feminine charisma or having charm or your grace or your kindness or your gravity gravity meaning that you are a woman of substance as opposed to being shallow or the tone of your voice or even your spiritual beauty so there are countless enchanting ways to have beauty and feminine appeal that will have way more bonding power than just having mere surface beauty. But with that being said, the standard definition or the textbook definition of pretty privilege or what is often called lookism is defined as a person having more opportunities and therefore becoming more successful in life because of how attractive they are. And lookism is a term that describes the discriminatory treatment of people who are considered physically unattractive. And this discrimination can occur in a variety of settings, including dating, social environments, and workplaces. And with the definition of pretty privilege or lookism, there's always going to be a percentage of women who are visually born with pretty privilege out of the gate. And the primary evidence of this privilege in our society will usually be found in what are typically visual mediums from Hollywood to television, to music, to models, to even becoming a successful social media influencer. So no gaslighting here on my part. In many instances, looks will matter. And in many instances, a woman's looks can be her moneymaker. So pretty privilege can be very real, but to a certain extent, because there is always the nature versus nurture argument as standards of beauty can be engineered and manufactured and weaponized by the culture of power or by distorted European beauty standards. And then there is what is considered attractive according to your specific culture as what may be considered a beautiful or a desirable body type in South Africa will not be the same as what is considered beautiful in France. 
And what may be considered beautiful in Harlem, New York, may not be considered beautiful in South Beach, Miami. And in some cultures, what is considered an attractive face and or an attractive body shape or an attractive weight will vary and differ greatly. So even within the realm of pretty privilege, what is considered physically beautiful is not always one size fits all. But no matter the cultural measurement, attractive women will often be pedestalized, will often trigger jealousy amongst women who are rendered invisible, and they will often be envied for how easily they are able to experience the very coveted male gaze in terms of beauty and in terms of easily cashing in. Because if we are being honest here, and some feathers will be ruffled to hear this, but women who are considered visually attractive or women who have asymmetrical features or women who have amazing figures or amazing bodies, their success will often be directly anchored by how desirable they are to the male gaze. And this male gaze in many cases is what will cause many women to be competitive and comparative and sometimes very nasty amongst each other. As all women, no matter the race, the skin tone, the nationality, the country of origin, or the class distinction will have vanity and an ego. And all women will have a wired desire to gain access to the best providers and protectors possible. So in a deeper sense, pretty privilege or lack thereof it can be directly linked to a hierarchy that is directly connected to hitting the genetic lottery. But hierarchies and privilege of any kind have always existed and will always exist on every corner of planet Earth. And of course, that fact alone can be irksome and will fuel jealousy, envy, and competition and will trigger insecurities because no woman wants to feel like an underdog or not included or excluded. And no woman wants to feel like they've been maligned or boxed out of certain opportunities because of the way they look. But in taking a deeper look, there are so many qualities that can make a woman with pretty privilege, very internally unattractive and anti-seductive, such as being vacant or vapid or shallow or empty behind the eyes or being boring and dull and dry or being masculine or lacking feminine appeal and more importantly, lacking personality or the ability to have an engaging conversation. And being attractive does not give a woman an automatic pass on self-esteem and worth. And it does not stop a man from treating a woman poorly or from being a cheater or a lowlife. And having pretty privilege will definitely not stop a man from being an abuser. Now, the reason why the topic of pretty privilege can be so triggering is because no one wants to be considered undesirable, especially as a woman, because the de facto measurement standard of worth for women will usually be the measuring stick of pedestalized beauty. And when a woman isn't on that celebrated pedestal, it will usually come with some very strong, devastating feelings of inadequacy, followed by feelings of powerlessness and feeling unseen, and the very horrible feelings of feeling non-existent and invisible. And no woman wants to feel invisible which is why the distortion tools of Facetune and Instagram filters is such a billion dollar business as visibility and being seen and being recognized is very, very important to women, which is why a woman will do whatever is necessary in her lifetime to receive any kind of recognizable societal validation from being a career woman to being a social justice warrior to putting themselves on the pedestal of mother or to becoming a boss CEO or CEO or to becoming infamous for negativity and starting beefs and being an instigator as negative attention is still attention and will always be better than being ignored. And to make matters worse, social media has definitely amplified the awareness of the haves and the have nots when it comes to pretty privilege and social media has unfortunately increased the pressure on young women and girls and to even mature adult women to believe and to emotionally invest in the distorted, the very distorted idea of perfectionism, which will also amplify the idea that on social media, that there are only winners and losers when it comes to beauty. And this is especially the case in our very youth driven culture. Now, please keep in mind that not all women who are considered unattractive 
or who are lacking in their pretty privilege will have low self-esteem, nor will they see themselves as ugly or hideous, as there are many women who were raised by loving, confident mothers and loving, supportive families who made them feel seen and worthy. So their confidence will naturally be higher and their self-esteem won't necessarily be in the gutter. And we all have witnessed women who are not super beautiful, but who can pull providers and who can pull men who can spend and men who are attractive. And there are many women who are not great beauties who have never had a problem finding a top tier husband. Again, this is a nuance that is often ignored in the conversation of pretty privilege. And just because a person is deemed conventionally attractive does not automatically mean that they are confident, that they have high esteem and worth, or that they feel more naturally worthy of the opportunities that are presented to them. As there are ugly things like abuse and neglect that can happen to an attractive person in their childhoods with their families, and that can give a woman who was born with pretty privilege a very poor self-image. A woman can also lose pretty privilege or she can be replaced or erased. Like in the case of age or weight gain, especially when her looks have always been her money maker. And pretty privilege can also come with some pretty negative consequences, such as being stalked by creeps and being used as a trophy or being used for pure objectification and street harassment. And people will often consider you vain or stuck up or snooty or that you are a natural sucker for attention. And while these issues may be considered frivolous first world problems, they are still undesirable problems nevertheless. And those first world problems are nothing to sneeze at. But it is very important for women, no matter where they are in life, to not feel sorry for themselves because self-pity has never helped any woman and will certainly not help any woman in the long run. And no matter what, if you want to get ahead in life, you will need to take full responsibility for yourself by rolling the dice and by making and creating your own luck. Even when you are feeling jaded and even if you feel that the game of beauty is unfair and has been jerry-rigged. Because no matter what, you cannot allow your feelings of insecurity or unfairness to turn into bitterness or hardened resentments as these are the temporary feelings that will permanently block your feminine potential forever. And you cannot allow yourself to look like five miles of bad road by not taking care of your appearance. And you cannot allow yourself to become that negative, embittered woman who will always have a problem for every solution. And you cannot allow what you weren't born with to paralyze you or to keep you stuck. Because ultimately, learning how to finesse the cars that you were born with will be your superpower. So being mad and upset at what another woman has will only in the long run end up becoming a huge crutch, a huge distraction, and a waste of the precious resource called time and a waste of your precious potential. And like my grandmother used to say, stop looking at someone else's plate when your food is getting cold. Now there is pretty privilege. And then there is the harnessing pull, the enchantment, the bonding power, the spiritual power and the seductive energy of the feminine divine that can and will make you a winner. And this feminine energy can be harnessed to completely change your life for the better and can completely put your life in a positive direction. And this is the arena where a woman who does not have so-called pretty privilege can shine and in many cases outshine women who were born with natural beauty as femininity is what will often give a woman desirable dimension. And there are many transcendent feminine qualities that can make a woman a bad bish, like being seductive or having feminine appeal or being alluring and mysterious and understanding male psychology, which is a huge one, and possessing soft feminine power. And all of these feminine skills, when used effectively, can be a woman's strongest form of currency. But all women, no matter what they look like, will have to tap within and she will have to do the work to arrive at that special place of unshakable confidence where she truly not only will like herself, but will absolutely love herself. And having that self-love is what will strengthen her feminine persuasion and it will also strengthen her unique brand of authenticity and having lasting attractiveness. 
So that is all that I have to say on this for now. While pretty privilege is most certainly a very strong form of social currency, it is not the only currency that a woman has. And depending upon the circumstances, it certainly isn't the most powerful. But if you are a woman who desires to feel confident and happy from head to toe, you will have to be committed to doing the internal work of self-acceptance, whether beautiful or not, and of figuring out your specific brand of femininity and of figuring out your feminine lane as it will differ from woman to woman. Because ladies and lurkers, life is a gamble and we all will have to deal with the very unique cards that were dealt to us. And the sooner that you can accept those cards as opposed to fighting those cards or wasting your time wishing that you had someone else's cards or hating someone else for the cards that they were born with, the sooner that you will come to know that the sky will truly only be your limit. So ladies and lurkers, does having pretty privilege automatically make a woman's life easier? And is being beautiful both a blessing and a curse? And as always, I look forward to reading your amazing comments from this amazing community below. And stay tuned for more Feminine School videos to come. And I will catch up with you ladies and lurkers in the next one.